Welcome back, Double Teamed Fam. How are we doing today? Today, we welcome Ali Eisman, founder of Passport to Pleasure and a non monogamy nerd just like us. But also, we are in a new studio because I booked the wrong one. Um, but it ended up working out because you're you're pretty local. Oh, yeah, I walked here. This is great. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Such oh, a nice amazing. Day out. I'm like, I'm going to get some steps. Oh, I oh, know. That's great. And the, the weather lately has been really good. Yeah. We earned so. it, I think, at oh, this I point. Especially oh, we have earned it. Yeah, yeah, it's the rainy weather was eh. But yeah. we needed it. We needed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm from the East Coast. Like, that's like barely weather, but I had a leak and it was a whole thing. <gasps> and so oh, no. it made it a very different experience. Wow. Is yeah. it all taken care of? <laughs> mm, that sucks. Sixth expert out to try. So hopefully, yeah. Oh, shit. I just, I know so many people that had like flooding or yeah. something like that in their house because of all yeah. the, all the rain. None of our, nothing's built for, I mean, look, normally I don't mind being wet, but in this instance. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Unconsensually, <laughs> like not, not ideal. That's I remember essential. one time in my, um, in my old house in Kansas, there was, we had a basement and I left the washer running. Oh, and no. the hose disconnected and it flooded my basement oh. and i came home and I, there was like six inches of water in my basement oh, my like God. around the whole thing oh, my gosh. and i just remember i was like i don't like getting wet like this what the fuck <laughs> like just so trudging through at the that water. level you just lean in you're just like you know what we have a pool now this is great. This is great. Just let we it have be. a pull now. Get yeah. the floaties. <laughs> I love your approach to life. That's not how Just I lean in. I know. What a positive perspective. Wait, what's it's your taken sign? Taking a lot of training. Um, Virgo. A uh, Virgo. Interesting. Virgos Very are pragmatic. typically pessi yeah, pessimistic a little bit. I, I would say I'm a realist. A realist. Yeah, yeah, I like to like look at everything. I'm definitely deeply feeling. But I don't make my decisions from an emotional place. Okay. You know, I, I hold you know, I hold the space that I need to to, you know, process them, but my decisions are based in logic and looking wow. at That must be know. so nice. Cause I, my emotions are all based out of emotions. <laughs> your decisions are all based Sorry, out of emotions. My decisions are all based out of emotions. Mm. Uh, wait, do you what's your moon? God. I, I don't have it memorized. I have had my chart done once for it. I find it all like entertaining. I'm definitely not one who's like, what sign are you? Check, please. You know, on a date or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. Like, it's cool to have, you know, stuff to talk about. But, oh my God, I have like, I know, I remember that I had Virgo in like three houses or something like that. And three, like, okay, so you had three, three placements that three are Three placements. Virgo. Got it. Okay. Yeah, See, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay, teach me. <laughs> I like it. Okay, well, for non astrology icebreakers, We'll start with a different one. Here's one I always like to ask our guests just to kind of get a feel for, you know, anything. Um, how would you explain, like, love or, like, sex to your children if you ever had them? Mm. Like, how would you how would you go about that? I'm, I'm often explaining to other people's children because oh, I, really? I, I, am, I am by choice child free. I uh, put a lot of thought into it. Love that. Um, but, yeah, well, I don't mean I'm direct. I'm not, I'm not like, sit down with Auntie Allie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, by request, like I'm often like counseling, you know, couples or friends of mine that yeah. um, want to have that conversation in a way that's more inclusive and invitational mm -hmm. rather than prescriptive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the important component being that they are not all the same thing. Love, sex, mm. marriage, being whatever relationship structure. These are not synonyms. These are ingredients. Oh, Ooh. that's so a great that's a perspective. Yeah. Got a yeah. few of them. I, <laughs> that's I like awesome. That, yeah. No, it's yeah. true. Actually, we did an episode recently where we had that. Yeah, like I had asked my mom questions about, you know, like her, you know, if she could redo like the sex talk with us or like, mm. you know, how she plans to go about it with like our younger brother and whatnot. And um, it was like really nice to like have that because we, we never really got the sex talk. Yeah. But it was really nice to have that conversation with her. But like it did have me thinking a lot about like how I would want to like if I mm. ever have children. I see. I don't know if I want children either. Mm. So it's important to think about because yeah. it's like, again, non-prescriptive, right? It is one of the many things mm -hmm. that you can choose to experience and do in life. You can't undo it. Yeah. <laughs> Once yeah, you make yeah. that choice, um, it is a long term decision. But I think I'm, I've always been so surprised at how much more thought I seem to have put into making the decision not to than most, not all, but most of the people I talk to who do. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, I would think I would want to really put the thought into like what is this choice but yeah. but it is it is treated like like monogamy like this mm -hmm. this assumption like yeah. this is what you do this is the relationship structure for everyone this is what you do when you have a partner and you know the escalator the relationship mm -hmm. yeah. escalator yeah. well i think you're right in the sense that like and i saw um 
I saw a friend who was at John Romanello in one of his Q and A's. He was like, um, someone had asked him about, you know, him wanting kids. And he was like, he was like, I want children because I want to be a parent. Mm -hmm. He was like, I feel like, like you said, you know, not a lot of people put into the thought into, I think a lot of people just like, oh yeah, you have children, life keeps Mm -hmm. going. Like you figure it out. And nothing changes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, um, (laughs) having a child is a pretty like substantial decision to make. Yeah. A, because you're essentially raising a human for 18 years. Oh, it doesn't stop at 18. No, exactly. No, yeah. It, it, but yeah. it keeps going. And then B, like, it's like another full, yeah, it's a full-time job. Mm-hmm. And it takes the, you know, you can want a child, but you should also want to be a parent. Yeah. So And all the ups and downs that, that come with it. I think it, John's so great at articulating things like that so clearly and concisely. But yeah. yes, putting that, that, thought into that decision of I want this role it is going to fundamentally change my life and I'm interested to see what that's like yeah mm-hmm. for me it was like just again looking at all the different things well a, I, I never really had that that like urge well I had about literally like a six month period very clearly hormonal I think it was around the time I turned 30 and it was like a switch went on and I was just like put a baby in me like I don't care who just like someone make this happen and then about six months after out of it and it was just like coming to like oh my god what just happened who am I where am I <laughs> like, uh. other than that have never had that urge so for me it was I've never had that like pressure or biological clock thing so I had the time to really look at it because when I was younger it was very much like a fear, like I'm a, like, what is that? I don't know how to do that, you know, reflections on my childhood, da, da 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 da. So I didn't want my decision to be motivated. I never want my decisions to be motivated from fear. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, let me, let me look at this thing, see what this is. And it's just like the smorgasbord of life that you can experience. There are so many more things that were so far beyond, so much more important to me to experience ahead of that. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, oh, this is just not a priority. Yeah, I Great. love that. Also, can can someone tell us about this like hormonal thing at thirty? Because I <laughs> I we, feel like I felt it. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I agree. Like, because when we turned thirty back in October, and I've never considered children, and suddenly now I'm like, well, like I will maybe put it on the table in about three years. But I know myself and like if I'm going to sit with something like I need to sit with it for a while before uh, like something as big as that. Like yeah. I need to like really process it and really like overanalyze and you know, come up with every like worst possible case scenario before I actually follow it. <laughs> That's just analyzing. A I, know. Decision. That's I know what I do overanalyze. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like I, I, I really need to put some thought into it. That's why I was like, OK, even though if I'm feeling this now where I'm like, OK, maybe. I like want to see if I'm still feeling maybe in three yeah. years because if I look back at my 20s there were so many things where it's like I felt this way and then I felt this way and then I felt this way and then I felt this way and so it's like I don't want to make that permanent a decision mm-hmm. and then later on I'm like oh wait I know my mind changes beautiful. all the time yeah, yeah. well I was just saying that's like a beautiful way of really breaking down how emotions and and you know factual logic information yeah. can be used to make decisions like okay I know my emotions are temporary they go in and mm-hmm. out yeah. let me like see which ones occur most often or yeah, get stronger yeah, yeah. and then see, you know, where am I at financially? Do I want to do this partnered or not? Where do I want to do this? You know, all the things that come with it, giving yourself again, that boundary as well of like time of like, okay, I'm going to look at this for three years or, or yeah. whatever it is. There's a, there's so much freedom in, in that boundary experience. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. And it's yeah. funny because now we're almost at the six month mark of turning 30 and yeah, I yeah. recently have found and like found myself going back to like oh god no I don't think I could ever have kids yeah it's you like know this. or yeah it's like this weird can someone do some research on that I want to know we what is a hormone do- hormone doctor is that the clinic yeah, yeah, yeah. Hor- the title yeah. for that there's got yeah. some I don't know something ends with just yeah. but anyways yeah. um okay so obviously not having children is something you put a lot of thought into mm-hmm. what about non-monogamy I'm sure that was yeah. something that was a oh yeah Tell me a little bit more about that journey. Sure. I mean, it's it's certainly one of the delightful things about what it what a, you know, alternative relationship structure can provide is I know I don't want kids, but I date people who have kids. Mm-hmm. And I, if, if you want kids, that's not a deal breaker for me. It doesn't have to be with me. Mm-hmm. If, if it has to be with me, yes, that's a that's a deal breaker. Okay, I can't yeah. offer you that. Yeah. But if like you're interested in having children, like I've had partners who have had children with other people and, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's a negotiated um, part Thing. of the yeah. relationship. So just to, to answer your question, my journey um, as far as my personal, you know, experiences with discovering this part of myself, I... 
I never really had like the cooties phase growing up. It was just like immediately like, how do we put our mouths together? Like, how, <laughs> we, like, how does this work? Like first and second grade, I think it was my first like boyfriend. We had, our first kiss was a French kiss in his backyard with his little sister watching. So always been into voyeurism and traditionalism. <laughs> um, started young. Um, <laughs> but I, I've always, um, I always ended up in these, you know, monogamous, as monogamous as you can be, like very young, but was always with, you know, one partner only dated men at the time. I was very closeted. And I remember like the exact moment I closeted myself as well in middle school, but only dating men, always about the same amount of time, well, boys, always about the same amount of time. And then always about the same amount of time in between the relationships. And then I would boom, get into the next one. And so once I realized that was a pattern, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always like, I'm always like researching, <laughs> like seeing like That's where, where you work the very, yeah. very, I'm like, if you need anything organized into a spreadsheet, color coded, call me. That's for <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was like, okay, there's a pattern here. I wonder what would happen. Like, I wonder what's on the other side of this like deadline of being single. What if I was like single for just longer than that before I got into the next relationship? And the answer is what's on the other side of that is all of the shit. So that began my personal journey of personal development, looking at, you know, where all my triggers were coming from, attachment styles, et cetera. And then still got into a few more monogamous relationships. But um, for me, the, the big, the, um, I guess, clue was I didn't have words like compersion yet, which is, is called like the opposite of yeah, jealousy. Yeah. It's when you experience pleasure from either hearing about or seeing your partner have pleasure or joy with someone else. I never understood why jealousy had such a bad rap because I loved hearing about my partners, like fantasies, other experiences, like all of that was like super yummy. I, of course, had to be an untouched virgin, you know, who couldn't spell penis or whatever. But, you know, I started finally trying to broach it. You know, I had gotten some more self-confidence through all that personal development work. And, you know, a couple partners landed on, okay, we can have a threesome with another woman. Never happened not for lack of me trying. And then I, oops, and then I ended up getting into um, what, what did uh, turn into my last monogamous relationship. I was with a partner who traveled a lot for work and I would join him when I could, but I wasn't always able to be there. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the times he was out of town, I said, you know, hey, if you meet someone, you know, we'd talked about it, of course, before, and I didn't spring this on him. But I said, if you, if you meet someone, you know, send me a picture, let me know how it goes. Like a really, like, that's so yummy to me. That excites me. And so at one point he did meet someone, um, I think in like the hotel bar or something, sent me a picture, super cute. I was so excited. I don't think I could sleep that night. I was like so excited. Like I couldn't wait. And I guess they just stayed up all night talking, which is still great. Like super sweet, loved it. Yeah. And then another time he was out of town and I had a friend coming into town. Uh, we had a sexual history, but we're very, mu very much just friends. So mm -hmm. it was a very, you know, safe in that way of like, we have this history, we know where the boundary is. And so my partner gave me what he called his green light. Mm -hmm. So my friend and I had a super fun night just playing. We had sex, we talked. I learned his last relationship was actually open, which I didn't know. Wow. So it was this beautiful moment. And I felt it was probably one of the two most validating experiences in my life, and I'll, I'll share the other one as well. It's a little later in the journey, but um, I was so excited to share with my partner. I yeah. was just like, I was experiencing love in a whole new way that I didn't even know was possible in me. So the second I left my friend's place, I called my partner just gushing. I'm like, what do you want to hear? I love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, ah, Aww. dead silence. Aww. And then I can't believe you did it. Oh, <gasps> no. Yeah. Oh, no. So whether it was, you know, a conscious testing, you know, hey, I didn't do it and you did so you don't love me as much kind of whatever. Oh, no. Don't ever test your partners, whatever relationship structure you're in. Even if it was, hey, I thought I'd be cool with this. I'm actually really not. Yeah. Making someone wrong for honoring an agreement. Yeah. Like, that, like I honored our agreement. I'm actually very proud of myself that I was able – in that like earliest stage of in a sense coming out yeah that i was able to go hey no i i honored our agreement i i didn't do anything we didn't both say was okay yeah i'm not wrong here it's okay if this doesn't work for you let's talk yeah. about that but why Don't am i the, the bad point. guy here yeah yeah, yeah. Like, what's that about so that was a catalyst and like okay a this is real for me i need to yeah. explore this yeah and b i need to do this solo no more yeah. emotional casualties i don't know what i'm doing so like i can take responsibility for myself but i don't want to be 
responsible for other people until I know like what this is. That's oh, such well. a high level of like emotional I know. IQ. Everything <laughs> you describe, which is like, great. Also, the way you talk, I'm just like, wow, you can tell she's actually like really worked on herself. Okay. No, I but I think a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, same, same. <laughs> yes, but I don't think I do that. <laughs> I but like, I that's so disappointing though, because if it anything, is. I mean, A, that that partner was like testing you because I agree. I don't agree with that either. Yeah. Like, I think that's just a shitty way of going about it. But B, that instead of being like, you know what? Because he could have easily just said like, hey, I thought I was going to be okay with this. Yeah. I wasn't. Let's talk about this. Let's fix it. It's exactly. not on you. It's on me. Yeah. Instead, he put it all. He, I don't know. She. He, hey. yeah, yeah, okay. Time. He put it all on you. And then, I mean, that's just ego work on his side. But yeah. it's just you didn't, you didn't deserve the blame for that. So that no, sucks. I, I yeah. really didn't. Um, I, I do still, you know, it wasn't fun. It was very painful. I'm actually really grateful um, that in that moment, we actually sought um, counsel with a friend of ours, a couple of friend of ours who are not non-monogamous, who are, who are very monogamous, but very developed in that they were able to reflect for me exactly what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, yeah. this is real for Allie. This is something she needs to experience, yeah. explore about herself. If it doesn't work for you, that's one thing. If you want to be a partner and support her in that journey, that's another. But let's not point fingers mm -hmm. and like, you know, project our wounding and et cetera. Yeah. So it was quite remarkable, honestly, because it's something I, I uh, run into a lot with uh, cl clients I work with. I have couples and individuals who are stepping into non-monogamy. They'll often seek support from from very well-meaning friends and family, but people who aren't experienced. Yeah. And a lot of times the feedback is like, hey, you weren't having these issues before you opened up. You know, maybe now you should you are. close. Non-monogamy is yeah. a problem. Yeah, no. yeah. And that's, and like, sometimes but rarely yeah. non-monogamy is not generally why a relationship is struggling it's yeah. just it's bringing it's shining a light on It'll, things that yeah, were easier yeah, exactly yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. but that is great that like yeah your monogamous friends were able yeah. to like actually look at that from a, a you know broad perspective rather than yeah. just like blaming non-monogamy i think that's on their part as well high emotional and very <laughs> yeah because i agree most of the time when you go to your i mean because i have a lot of you know my vanilla non-monogamous friends and i'll go to these i'll go to them with all my issues of my you know non-monogamous relationships from the past and they're like well you know maybe maybe you should just try one person and anyways that, i was always just like oh, this isn't the support i wanted just yeah. say everything's gonna be okay and that you love me like yeah. you I, you don't need to give me any advice because like we're both experiencing very different things so yeah, yeah but sometimes i get it they want to you know feel as if they're contributing something but anyways well that's a great I, I want to just like touch on that really quickly because when we are seeking advice you know from friends versus professionals um, yeah it's it's a different context when you you know walk into a therapy appointment it's clear what you're there for yeah when you're going to a friend something I love that I'll practice with friends and I love like I, I certainly don't do it every time and I have wonderful friends who can call me on it when I go like go into coach mode or something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah but it's like hey, what do you need from me right now? Do you just need an yeah. ear? Do you just want to vent? Do you want just reassurance? Or do you want advice? Yeah. yeah. Because those are different <laughs> things. Agreed, yeah. yeah. So setting up that context is important, regardless of relationship structures Yeah. I mean, it reminds me of one of my very best friends, probably the person that, like, I'm, you know, that I talk to the most on a daily basis besides Kimi. I remember one time, you know, she was, like, venting to me about something, and immediately, I, or she, you know, I was like, oh, don't worry, like, that'll come for you too or whatever. And she was like, or like, that'll happen one day for you too. And like, even though like I was providing support, she was like, she just immediately told me, she was like, that I appreciate that support. That's not the support I was looking for. This is the support I would prefer. And I was like, Excellent. okay, got it. And I literally like, you know, regurgitated that and let her know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to provide that support as well. And I just love it when you have a friendship with someone that can like actually be like, you know, Hey, this is actually what I needed or this is what I need. Cause like, I think that level of open communication, cause now sometimes I'll think about it before, you know, when she comes to me with something mm -hmm. like venting, I'll take like an extra second to step back and think like, okay, what does she want right now? Like, what or you know sometimes I'll ask her or you know if she if she's coming to me for support like what kind of support and then you know then I look at the patterns of like the past of what she prefers so yeah That's friendships great. where like you guys can be that honest yeah. top tier like you're practicing yeah really like looking at who you're spending your time with like are you practicing skills you want to improve in? are you yeah are you able to like be that reflection for each other and like hey you're not being that version of yourself that you said you yeah. wanted to be hey I'm watching you self-destruct and like I don't stand for that yeah. Oh, I love when my friends hold me accountable. Yeah. You don't love it when I hold you accountable. No, <laughs> no but I love that because you do it in a way I don't like. But everyone, my the other sister friends. filter shifts everything. Well, no, I love that you said that because, like, I always think, you know, like, 
Kimmy and I are probably in a lot of ways not definitely we're not perfect by any means but in the way that we communicate to each other and the way that we mirror so much of ourselves to each other like I feel like that has been one of like the greatest teachers in like preparing myself for like you know my next like more committed long-term relationship especially Mm -hmm. like now that like we live together again and you know it feels like a marriage (laughs) (laughs) but more often than not but like I I'm always very grateful for that experience because like I you know especially like when you think about like people that are single especially like in Los Angeles um, people that aren't like around family you know maybe they like you know work all the time so they don't have friends like they don't often get like the opportunity to like have that mirror or have Mm -hmm. someone that's able to like call them out or like a close relationship that can be like hey like you said I don't Mm -hmm. stand for that like think about this behavior or this perspective or whatever and like those are important as you prepare for a relationship. Well and I love what you said too that term mirror I'm such a fan of like remembering that that's ever that's only ever what we each are for each other. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Like if you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see and you punch the mirror, who gets hurt? You know, if you make the mirror wrong for what you see, you're just, you know, you you end up with a bloody hand. That's a great analogy. Yeah. You're just seeing something for you to look at, change, shift, reimagine. It's not the mirror. (laughs) It's the reflection. I love that. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we been like (laughs) yelling at each other for something and then, you know, stop and think for a minute and you're like, wait, well, and you oh. guys have a literal mirror. Yeah, so, no, but like, I'm not kidding when I say literally almost every single time I'm like, you know, giving Cammy some sort of lecture on something that she's doing wrong. I, in my head, I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, right. I'm doing it too. Oh, right. This song is about me. <laughs> oh, yes. shit. So when you decided to part ways from that partner and kind of mm-hmm. step into non-monogamy on your own, what did that look like? That looked like, like okay. where did you start? Cause like, I know for me, for example, I started off like with my ex-husband more mm-hmm. monogamish mm-hmm. and then kind of like moved into open and swinging and then more into polyamory. So we kind of mm-hmm. did the very like stepped approach, mm-hmm. but I know everyone's got a different way of like yeah. getting into it. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that. It's, it's different whether you're a solo or partnered, mm-hmm. it, it can look different, you know, yeah. regardless. So for me, I was solo. I had come out of that relationship. I knew I had this history of, you know, what I call serial monogamy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, it needs to be different. And I've done, you know, the version of being single and feeling good about being single. I didn't have this like need to be in relationship like I used to have. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'm committed to doing this on my own. So I don't inadvertently hurt anyone I care about. Mm. Universe, I know there's communities out there. I know there's parties. I've seen the movie Eyes Wide Shut. Like stuff is... (laughs) stuff's out there you know (laughs) and I'm like I don't know where so let me get on you know the apps and you know luckily there were apps at the time so I just started doing dating apps and I had never I had never done that before um I mean this is back in a few years ago (laughs) did you go ham because I feel like everyone's first shot at say the, I, did you go ham like on the apps because oh, yeah. like everyone's I mean, first shot at the apps i was thinking about it the other day i was like i i went like balls to the wall when i went on the dating <laughs> well, yeah after my uh after i ended things with my ex-fiance me on the dating apps was oh, yeah. harmful feral <laughs> like feral <laughs> yeah we're no, off <laughs> i couldn't control myself i was constantly yeah. just oh it was so i one bad. time had uh like <clears throat> six dates turned dick appointments in like the span of four days it was ridiculous okay, i had a coffee a lunch and a dinner in one day <laughs> oh no no that's how you do it good company i was like i've never done this before let it's me do like, all of it yeah. <laughs> so was, i'd never had a one night stand i'd never i just kind of wanted to start checking experiences off again like card, very yeah. scientific you know let yeah. me just gather information and and so it was actually not it didn't actually take as long as I thought it would I was having a lovely afternoon one afternoon stand um with this gentleman (laughs) and um you know you gotta get the appointments in (laughs) and and we're cleaning up and he just started he goes you know there's this there's this community I feel like you might be interested in and he was my little play party play party fairy that was his whole purpose in my life it was just like connect me to my first community and then he like disappeared into the wilderness and never to be heard from again it was perfect and I went to my first play party and this is the the story of my second most validating experience you know I had that again that connection yeah, yeah, yeah. with my friend and realizing this is real so I go to my first play party solo which I did not know was like nice an amazing thing to people <laughs> um I was very lucky the the friends that were hosting this um 
were just so lovely and warm. And the second they found out this was like my first party, they just took me under their wing, introduced me to yeah. everybody, you know, all that stuff. And this was in like a, a decent, decent sized, like, um, oh, what do you call it? Like penthouse suite, like in a hotel nice. situation. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, later in the evening, but not as late as I would have thought. And I just noticed people had kind of cleared out. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like I thought there'd be, I'd seen some little, you know, playing here and there, nothing, nothing too crazy. I was just, you know, I thought, I thought there'd be like more and like later and I'm, Okay, I got this is interesting. And one of the hosts was like, Oh no, 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 no. Come with me. <laughs> Takes me around this corner. I didn't even see this like hallway. Into just it was just like ah. <laughs> so, like this room of bodies, like oh, like, yeah. a, like a like a Renaissance painting. Yeah. <laughs> like, sea I love of it. undulation. And it was honestly like it sounds so cheesy, but one of the most beautiful things I had seen. Yeah. It was so validating. It was just like I dropped so fully into my body and present. And I was just like, oh, I'm home. This is real. Aww. This is healthy. This is okay. Mm -hmm. There are other people like me. And I had come without any intention of playing or anything like that. And um, one of the hosts who was a woman just came up to me in this moment. And she had, you know, brought me to this space. And she was just like, you have this, the most beautiful breasts. Like, <laughs> can, I, can I kiss on them a bit? I'm like, yes. <laughs> watching this I'm just like whatever <laughs> yes very much um and it just opened up just a whole part of me and I was just like okay this is this is something I want to explore when I get curious about something I go all in yeah, so you I know I started that. hosting for different communities I linked up with and just just went as deep as I could and just met as many people as I could and and now here we are <laughs> um, eight nine years later so that's a long yeah. time yeah 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 how long have I wait I'm around seven Wait, so you went more. to a house party before you went to like a club party? Yeah. Um, no, it was a, it's a hotel, but the same tomato tomato. In a was it, but it was club. like hosted by like yeah, it was not a like private club event. Organized. It was not a yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. I'm personally more of that scene for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's just my personal. No, preference. I agree. Like the private. I mean, I love the club ones, but the private ones that we've been to have usually because they're it's very curated, close knit yeah. communities, and so like yeah, our. I had met a couple on Tinder and they were the ones that opened my eyes oh. to play parties. Mm -hmm. At that point, my ex-husband and I had, had already been non-monogamous for a few years, but this was the first time anyone had ever like invited us to a sex party. And, and I remember like also that feeling of just like, I felt so, you know, validated and like, it felt so good to be around people that, you know, had the yeah. same interests as me. And so, I don't know. I mean, I know like for our listeners, some, a lot of them have been to, or a, uh, well, I don't know about a lot, but like some of them have definitely been to play parties, but then like probably the number one question we always get is for people like wanting to go. Mm. And I always recommend, I'm like, if there's nothing near you, like go to New York, go to mm -hmm. LA, like sign yeah. up to go to one and experience it. Because if you think it's something that you're going to love, like give it a try. Cause it, they really are such great environments. Yeah. Yeah. I want to yes. And that too, definitely making it like a destination experience yeah. is awesome. Also know two things, do research. Yeah. Oh, Especially yeah. if you're going to a hub like New York or LA, there are so many there options so many, and so yeah. many yeah. communities and you might think you know what you want. Yeah. And then you might get there and oh shit, it's not actually. Yeah. So it's okay to try a few times. Yeah. I actually oh, recommend like don't <laughs> your first experience with anything, mm -hmm. you know, is not necessarily going to be indicative of how you're going to experience that over time. Yeah. yeah. I, agree. I also like that you said for your first one you didn't go in there like with the intention of playing yeah. because I feel like for anyone going to a party a play party specifically for their very first time they shouldn't put that pressure on themselves yeah. I think you should just go with the intention of seeing what happens and being open-minded and that's yeah. it and yeah. then if things happen great if they don't you know come back next time see how you feel so yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's no prescription like there's you're not expected to do anything other than know and speak to your boundaries and yeah. honor everyone else's. Yeah. Like there is no like, oh, I failed at play parties because I didn't play. Like yeah. we, and also I, I like to make clear, like you don't have to be non-monogamous to go yeah. to play parties yeah. and you don't have to go to play parties if you're not monogamous. Like yeah. we have, so I'm, I sit on the board of a community called The Play here in LA mm -hmm. uh, first and unfortunately still the only play party to require STI testing from our guests. But it's something that like, I, I see a lot of, um, we have a lot of variety in our community. And so we have monogamous couples that do come to our events. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't play with other people. They may not even play with each other, but they enjoy the environment. Yeah, they get yeah. worked up, yeah. you know, yeah. meeting people it's and they hot, go home. Yeah. Exactly. Or maybe they play with each other. But it's, again, it's like being in an, an, a contained environment with other people that you know um, are on the same page as you. There's just, um, 
there's this freedom and I don't mean that in like a free for all way like this space is not yeah. a free for all yeah it's a contained very specifically created space with boundaries and yeah. you know some parameters within which to explore yeah yeah I, I like that you mentioned that there are monogamous people at play parties because yeah. it took me a while to realize that. Yeah. <laughs> at first, my lenses weren't like seeing that just because like, especially at the at the beginning of my play party career, <laughs> I didn't really play mm. like at all. I think I I think it took quite a few. Well, the house, the first house party that I went to, I played in. And then after that, it was just like the the club ones that I would go to. It, it definitely took some time, but it, it for after a while i realized i was like oh there are monogamous people here too yeah because some people just go to watch or just go mm -hmm. to play together and be watched and that's it and there's so. nothing wrong with that but it is mm -hmm. a little low-key disappointing when you see a really hot couple and <laughs> you're like what do you mean yes and they're like we're monogamous and you're like fuck <laughs> anyways yeah that is a good one um so i was gonna ask are you wait do you what's your sexuality yes Yes. Okay. So like you're oh, that's right. okay. Well, because I feel like those journeys are always so like intertwined. Can, well, because yeah. you're creating an opportunity to come at this part of your life with curiosity, yeah. I ideally. Um, and so for me, like I didn't know that I had closeted myself until I like really started leaning yeah. in. Like I first started in in the play party space, like getting to fulfill some curiosity yeah, and yeah. play with women. And I didn't realize until some more time had passed, like, oh, I'm only playing with women under the male gaze. Like, yeah. this is for a yeah. male partner or for the men there. Do I enjoy having sex with women just for having so <laughs> Like, yeah. do I want to date women? Do yeah. I and it's a journey. I'm still exploring, like, what that yeah. is. You know, I have more of a history dating men. So yeah. I'm, like, still in the phase working on it actively right now but like when there's like a pretty girl in the room I turn into like a 12 year old I just like don't know like how to talk to her I don't because my the way I I made it okay for myself because I learned oh like I can't express these feelings they're wrong da, 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 and I, you know it's a separate story what happened in middle school but I would become their best friend if mm. I thought a girl was cute um. so I am like the expert at friend zoning myself with pretty women <laughs> Um, really good at it. So um, working, working on it right now, but have, you know, had more experiences where it's like, oh yeah, no, I do enjoy connecting with women, with non-binary folks, with, mm -hmm. I'm sapiosexual is what I've discovered. It's like, the way I say it is I care more about what's between your ears than what's between your legs. Mm, like if there's, yeah. if, if you're not getting my brain wet, yeah. you know, like zombie kink, like I'm here for your brains. Like I want your brains, give me your brains. Um, I, I, then I just, I mean, <laughs> I can appreciate you have a beautiful form, but there's just, I, there's nothing's going to happen for me. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask, or you kind of answered my question, but yeah, because at least for me, like non-monogamy is kind of what opened the door to me exploring my sexuality. Mm -hmm. And then once I got more comfortable and like, especially, you know, I would meet mm -hmm. women at play parties that I wanted to play with solo. And then that made me realize that like, okay, I liked women you know, yeah. in a, in like a sexual way solo, but then like, then I went into dating women. And so, yeah, that kind of sparked my whole journey yeah. as well. But I do think, you know, in the end, probably my, you know, my next long-term partner will be a man, but yeah, it's just, that was always like one of my favorite parts of like my journey as well in non-monogamy yeah. was just because I also, for a long time, I was like, well, hmm, I wonder why I'm, you know, gravitating more towards, you know, Victoria's Secret magazines as a, you know, 12 year old instead of like <laughs> men, you know, I don't know. So it was, yeah. yeah Versus I had, this is not a kink and I probably should have referenced it right after that. I had all <laughs> the animal magazines, but not in the same way. <laughs> Not in the same way that you have the Victoria's Secret magazines. I just like nerd out about animals and think they're really cool. I love it. Oh, we have like six pets. Do you have any pets? I have I have now one cat. Uh, we lost Cat the Cat last year. But um, his Aww. little brother, Albert. Prince Albert. Yeah. Prince That's Albert? The cat's name. You get it. <laughs> well, he came to me as a little rescue, like fit in the palm of my hand. And his name's Albert. I'm like, that's ridiculous. His name's Albert. That's, oh, wait. <laughs> Prince Albert. Perfect. And he's a little BDSM kitty. Like he likes the hard smacks. <laughs> like mama, like, like mama, like baby. Um, yeah. <laughs> wait, and where did B BDSM come into the journey? Uh, I mean, it's definitely a part of the things I like to explore. For me, the Was biggest... that before non-monogamy? Hmm. Well, I always, like, again, I didn't have the vocabulary, right? Okay, So yeah. I knew I liked, you know, restraint, um, like, to be dominated. For me, I'm a very, um, I'm a very dominant person <laughs> in all areas of my life. So it's really healing for me to be able to have 
that energy taken over by someone else in Mm -hmm. at least one area. And for me, that's, you know, sexually in the bedroom. Um, It's not easy for me to get there. I have to trust that you're able to, you know, execute at my level of, you know, Mm -hmm. reference standards. Um, But it enables me to access a part of myself that is um, very hard, very hard to to do regularly, like to soften, mm-hmm. to receive. Yeah, yeah. To, and, th- and that's very important to be able to do. And so that power play enables me to to explore that part of myself. And it, it has been very healing. I love that. No, same for me. Yeah. At least in, well, and yeah, but it was very similar in that like they all kind of like come at the same time. Once you yeah. really, once you open the door to one, then all these other doors start flying open and you're yeah. like, oh, wow, hold on. Which one do I go through? Well, you get out of the prescription, yeah, right? Yeah. The prescription society goes, you're, this one relationship should fit for everyone. Yeah. If you're not, if it's not working for you, you're the problem, you're wrong. And you're getting into this invitational space of yeah. like, what's possible? What would you like to explore? Let's be curious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I started reading about it in books before I ever like actually went into. That's nice. So that was um, that was really exciting for me because I feel like in my mind, like I I had all these fantasies, and then one day I got to put them to use. So yeah. what was yeah. your what was your gateway book? Oh, <laughs> this is horrible because it's what? not a good representation. But it was Fifty Shades of Grey. That's how I discovered. Everybody starts Impact somewhere. Play. Yeah, that was how I discovered Impact Play, yeah. and I was like, ah, oh, I'm into yeah. that. Um, but then, you know, there were definitely, I started reading reverse harem Mm. and that's how I learned about non-monogamy and like, that's how I started fantasizing about different relationship structures. And then I was like, wait, (laughs) yeah, that sounds fun. (laughs) So that's why I like, that's why I call myself a non-monogamy nerd because I'm like, you know, let me read everything, like find it out. I actually like, I went back to school initially to pursue my master's in clinical psychology because I was like, this is really interesting for me. I'm going to try this out. But there was like no course material on oh. and, and any other relationship dynamics like all couples counseling mm-hmm. at the time at least came from a very um like modern normative or like you know two yeah. people only kind yeah. of view and keep the couple together at the all nuclear cut, family yeah. very much yeah and so i was like shoot i'm gonna have to do all of this like immersive self-study on my own let me save the like hundred grand and like yeah. do that anyway and so yeah just i've been reading everything i can obviously i've been immersed in the community practicing myself etc um, and it's exciting to see this time right now where we're having this conversation in a bigger way. I mean, we've seen it before, like in, what was it, 1997, I think is when Ethical Slut came out. Yeah. And so there was some media attention at that time as well, and it kind of went quiet again. But now we have social media. It's like a, it boomed. Huge difference. Yeah. yeah. And you see it more yeah. like in TV shows and yeah, like yeah, yeah. so yeah. many more people are like interested in like play parties and non-monogamy, monogamish. I remember one of, one of our old, other guests previously, she was like, the future is monogamish. <laughs> and I'm like, it really is. Yeah. Well, the future yeah. is to me like relationship dynamics. I, I use the term alternative relationship Mm -hmm. guide but I actually don't really like it because it still alludes to like monogamy is the relationship structure and then everything else is other than that yeah it's just about relationship structures understanding how you build them and what you need so that you can build the one that's most fulfilling and sustainable for you and your partner or partners yeah Yeah. it's all I mean at the end of the day it's all negotiation yeah I think people forget that it's a negotiation yeah and connection Yeah. yeah I mean you could find you know, three people who just all of a sudden clicked and wanted to do this thing together and maybe they didn't have a name for it at the time, but now they do. And it's like, sometimes, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. Like, well, and that's a key point too. You said like, um, now you have a name for it. Yeah. Like labels are really interesting. I like to think of them and I, and I encourage other people to think of labels as a conversation starter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not, again, it's not this prescription. It's a yeah. way I can communicate to you generally, hey, this is the world in which I am or this is the world in which I'm thinking about exploring. Yeah. Now let's talk about it. What does that mean to you? There's a lot of assumptions when we get into like status quo culture of like, okay, we're dating. I'm going to assume that means the same thing to you as it does to me. Yeah. I'm going to assume you want the same kind of relationship as it does to me. Even if we use the you know word, I'm going to assume it means the same thing to you as it does to me. We're going to get married i'm gonna assume that means the same thing to you i said all these assumptions right yeah instead of again invitations so like oh you use that word i also use that word what does that mean yeah 100 percent. this is how you use it that's actually a great that's a even a bigger conversation (laughs) no and i I love that yeah everyone you know like for example i i can't remember where we were one time but someone was like oh yeah y'all are swingers right like yeah and i was like no what (laughs) uh i mean 
Nicole has swung, but like <laughs> that she's not a swinger right now. Like I've never been a swinger. Like what do you mean? Like you know, yeah. in the sense but that, that it's a like, verb, not an adjective. No, exactly. And they're like, <laughs> it was an open relationship, and yeah. I'm like, well, that's different. different. Yeah. yeah, you know. So I feel like you you do have to, especially with labels these days, you do have to ask, okay. This is how I interpret this word. What mm. does it mean to you? But You're even so like, right I mean, I was just actually having this conversation with someone yesterday where I was like, I was like, I don't want to make any assumptions. Like was, you know, you said it wasn't romantic, but were, y- were y'all hooking up? And and they were like, did I not just say it wasn't romantic? And I'm like, well, hooking up and romantic are two completely different but things. there's the love yeah. sex. Yeah. Right? yeah. And then they were like, no, it isn't. And I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> like casual relationship casual yeah. sexual relationships can you know fall under the so it's like I, I agree like when it comes to vocabulary even the normal dating vocabulary of mononormativity should still be <laughs> yeah. discussed, discussed negotiated exactly. and explained because, because like someone could you could be going going on dates with someone mm-hmm. and you're like oh we're dating yeah and the other person's like oh we're getting to know each other or mm-hmm. oh we're going on dates and, and then you're like and then different. what does that mean to you what does dating mean to like what 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 are the what are the actions that you're going to take under dating what are the actions yeah. you're going to take under this so yeah well have, have you like when you're in a partnership do you talk about with your partner like what is cheating yeah oh no, I, I always do that all the time yeah what to is you. cheating yeah, yeah exactly because you can have very different understanding of what that line is yeah, yeah. every yeah and this yeah 100 percent because i we've had that discussion on the pod so many times and i actually still am thinking to myself like what i would define cheating as because i, I still have to really think about how i define mm-hmm. it for myself but I, I have a few key things like yeah. if you did this i would consider it cheating yeah. you know that kind of thing well i think inherently the the important thing is is cheating is lying and deceit it's yeah. not yeah. whether or not you're having sex with someone or whatever but you have boundaries that you have to yeah. discuss of like i don't mind if you do xyz with other people you, whether you tell me or not you know you determine that but beyond that you know i want that for us kind of a thing then it's you know crossing that boundary would be cheating but understanding like okay if if we've said we have a monogamous relationship again what is that no. so if you're <clears throat> you know if you're having penetrative you know genital sex that's cheating but blowjobs are fine yeah maybe that's your partner's feeling but you don't know that if you don't talk about it yeah and that might not be your line exactly um i was gonna ask on a more like fun note since you've been very isn't this all fun i know (laughs) no i mean more like a great conversation no it is yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) but on uh i guess because you've been to a lot of play parties and i know you um, i'm at 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 least one every four to six weeks (laughs) i know that's why i'm asking so like and and i know i have my stories that i've definitely said on the pod but what like, do you have any, like, really, like, fun or wild, crazy things that you've seen that, like, every time people ask about, like, maybe something, like, super memorable from a sex party, like, this thing comes to mind? Oh, man. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, like, going through the... <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I'm, like, I feel, and I feel so lucky. Like, it, t- it took me, you know, I had been in this scene for probably about four years before I linked up with um, the founders of the play. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, and I'm obviously very immersed in the community now. City. I sit on the board as the consent and communication specialist. And so what Love that looks that. like is I'm our consent fairy at the yes. events. I do the consent talk. I'm always available if anyone has any questions or That's needs great. to negotiate communication, anything like that. I love it. I could all day. I could talk about that. Um, but as far as like, oh, God, I'm like, it's such a fun thing to be in a community of friends who like I experience compersion for friends. It's not mm-hmm. just romantic partners. So like I have a dear friend of mine um, who we, we get very strong compersion for each other. And I just remember this one night I was having a great experience with someone. She was having a great experience with someone. And we like, look, we hadn't even realized we look over, we're right next to each other. And just realizing we're both like, it's just like next leveled everything for both of us. Aww. And it was just this, such a sweet, and we got to like debrief afterwards together and have this beautiful, unexpected shared moment that also enabled each of us to have an even more heightened experience. That's oh so cute. It was really yummy. Yeah. I always love going into sex parties and I'm like in a room and I'm like, Nicole! <laughs> <laughs> And someone will be like, she's not in here. <laughs> well, that just reminds me about a play party once where I was like, I was, get, you know, laying there getting fucked by someone. And then I turned and then it was a friend of mine. And I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> and I hadn't connected them with at the party yet. So and so fun. we were like having a conversation while this dude is like, you know, railing into yeah. me. And I'm like, how are you? 
like, what's going on? Who is that? It looks like they're having like it's so funny. I think about that all the time because like that happens at play parties more often than yeah. not. Yeah, you know, because you know there are so many people you haven't had a chance to see everyone yet. Yeah. So like you know maybe you make it on a bed and then you run into someone you know and next thing you know you're having a conversation in the middle of exactly. banging. Anyways. Wait, I know we're we're wrapping up. So wait, tell us about Passport to Pleasure real quick. <laughs> sure, thank yes. you. Yeah. So I just I officially have launched Passport to Pleasure, um, which is my website. I am basically bringing together all of my resources, experience, knowledge, making myself accessible to people in a whole new way. It's formalizing work that I've already been doing for years now in that, you know, being a leader, speaker, and the mm -hmm. organizer in this space, I found myself approached by, primarily by couples actually, which I found very interesting, but also, you know, individuals, polycules for just like guidance and yeah. like how to navigate this, or maybe they're experiencing rupture and they need support for repair. And so I made the decision last year to leave the, the, role I was in at the company I was at and I wanted to do something for myself and spent some time figuring out what that was and realized I want to do this more formally. Yeah. I want I basically my mission is I wish I existed back when I started. Mm. I'm seeing so many more people, you know, come into our community well-intentioned yeah. but completely unresourced yeah, yeah. and they're, right, they're learning lessons the hard way which you know i i had to do all that and i want to save people the the time the heartache you know sometimes the money depending on what happens in marriage and everything but like the all the unnecessary part of it like yeah. if you can get all the resources the education the tools everything really understand what it is you're actually doing instead of what you think it is it's going to be such a smoother road. It's going to be so much more beneficial and, and a, such a net positive experience for you and if you're partnered, your partner mm. as well. So all that to say, courses, private guidance. I'll be launching um, eco-luxury retreats as well. And it's just a place for you to really, again, get all your questions you know, answered, really educate yourself, figure out, you know, is my relationship ready? I have some free resources as well. There's a, a free download called the Relationship Ratio, and it's basically a worksheet mm -hmm. that enables you to see if where your relationship is right now is ready to open up. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And before even that, why? Yeah. If you want to explore this space, why? Yeah. Because understanding that, you know, what I call your big why is going to inform every decision that you make yeah. in yeah. this journey. Yeah, 100%. So those are the two the two free resources I have. And then, of course, I have courses, again, like I said, guidance, all that. And where can people find that? Passporttopleasure.com. And it's the number two. So passport, the number two, pleasure.com. And we can put that, that in the episode yeah. description. Oh, now, do you want to plug any like Instagram, social media? It's it's I'm the same everywhere. Passport to pleasure on Instagram, <laughs> TikTok, unless they get rid of TikTok or whatever's happening right now. Yeah. Some YouTube, Facebook. What are all the things? Um, on on most of the things, Instagram of course is the the main one. But yeah, it's all linked through the website as well. So love if you type that. in passport to pleasure, you'll find me. Love, love that. Them. Well, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you you so have been a delight. Yeah, you have been an absolute delight. Yes. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to talk about. So. No. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, same for us. We have a whole podcast about it. So, um, but anyways, yeah, thank you for, for joining us today. And I hope like for any of our guests that are listening, if they want to get into it or if they want more resources, that they check out yes, the website please. and everything. I mean, I'm always just so happy to see, cause like, you know, we've been in this space for some time. So it's, it's always great to see like awesome, really positive people with like really healthy mindsets yeah. that want to help other people like get into this space. Yeah. So you, thank you, you for the have, work that you do. Thank you. I think it's important to understand you can have a healthy or an unhealthy relationship in any structure. So might as well educate yourself. Yeah, yeah that 100%. Yeah. Well, guys, y'all know where to find us. DoubleTeamPodcast.com has all the relevant links. Don't forget, wear condoms. We love y'all. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye.